So initially going into the course, I felt that I wanted to do it to supplement my awareness and knowledge of musculoskeletal medicine and primarily to do the dance medicine unit um, for my research project. An added bonus has been the recognition that actually what I really want to do is be a dance physician. And the best way of serving that cohort of future or possible patients is to train in sports medicine. In Gulf area, we don't have uh, female physicians. Uh, we have female doctors, surgeon, orthopedic surgeon in general hospital. And nowadays we have a football team in Qatar, which is the female football team. They are coming to the general hospital to be treated. And when I ask one of them, why you don't go to your club doctor? She said, I want to see a female doctor. Patients will be asked how they felt about your examination. Did they feel comfortable? Did you hurt them? Were you rough? All these things are not good things to be doing. One of the big developments, I think, in sports and exercise medicine is that teams of professionals work together. And in order to reflect those teams, we have different professions on, on the course. At the moment, we have physiotherapists, osteopaths, and doctors. And they all have their own route through the course and some, and some shared teaching. And I think the quality of the research, we really assist and push and promote students to do high quality work. We won't settle for simple paper projects. We, you know, we're trying to encourage people to do experimental work and observational work with people. Okay, when you're ready, your maximum push, 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 and relax. Hold on, 33. <laughs> and quite often that research will take them on. They may have done research with a particular group and that'll help them in building a career or working with that group. But equally, some students decide they want to go on and do further study. And we've got four students just now who've done the masters um, and have gone on to, to do a PhD because that clinical academic mix is powerful. I came into the masters wanting to answer two questions really or, or filled two voids that I had within my my practice. One was to make sure that what I was uh, delivering was evidence based or evidence informed at the very least to make sure that I was kind of up there with the current thinking or current understanding and the second was to have an exposure to research which is something that they, they place a lot of weight on here within the masters. Having got those two uh, exposures if you like, having got those two skills, um, I was very keen to, to do more and, and Queen Mary had the options to do more and I've started along that kind of that, that journey really of, of a, a, well, a world or a part of my world in, in academia and, and uh, I think it marries up very well with the clinical stuff that I'm doing but um, uh, I wouldn't want one sort of to be totally separate from the other. And at the end Remember, you've got to summarise back to the patient, OK? Because you've got a relationship with that patient. So you say, this is what I found, this is what I think is going on, these are the sorts of tests I'd like to do, or I'd like you to go see one of my colleagues for physio, or whatever you think is appropriate, OK? Make sure you do that bit. QMU, I like, is a very international uh, university. It's, it's great, just the vibe that you can, you know, sense when you walk into a campus, uh, location-wise, my land, the east end of London, um, and then as well within the campus, like, you see, like, a, a different type of people. No one really is concerned too much about where you come from, what language you speak. They're more, like, really focusing on, you know, what have you got to offer, what is your question, and we're here to answer your question. I think this is what, this is why we're particularly popular with, um, you know, even not UK, non-EU students, um, because we are really focusing on what each individual could bring uh, to the actual institutions, to the centre first, to the institution as WHRI, and ultimately to the all like university. We found the curriculum in Queen Mary University of London different from the curriculum that is conducted in Canada and uh, US. They are um, restricting such courses only to, um, to the doctors. And we found that we have lots of gaps that osteopath and physiotherapist fill it. And also we fill their gaps, which um, make our knowledge in musculoskeletal and sport more deep and um, more rich. Okay, so then you have to examine them. 
And again, it's all the examination techniques that you've been shown, and I would hope you're practicing in small groups anyway. Okay? So what position are you going to examine them in? Okay? Remember, what we're looking for is what would you do in your clinic if you were seeing this patient as a proper, normal patient? Aside from going through this tick box where we make sure you've done the individual tests, we, we will mark you based on, did it feel right? Were you professional? Were you someone we would like to work with as a colleague? If you th think back and think, oh, I missed that little bit, don't worry about that. If you're slick and professional, you will be fine. But the only way you'll be slick and professional is if you've practiced. So are, are people practicing? Have you got small groups going? Happy day, it's perfect. There is security in doing a job that you're truly passionate about because you will find something to do, you know, within that area. You will make it happen when you really want something. And that's a side of me that I haven't seen before, you know, because I've done everything that was expected of me. This time, I'm, I am designing that curriculum, as it were. I am setting my own... PDP, it's possible to carve a career path and a portfolio career and a niche career if you've got the drive and the passion. You just have to act on it.